I'm Annie Fitzsimmons. I'm your Washington Realtors Legal Hotline lawyer. I'm often asked the question through the legal hotline, and it can come from either buyer broker or seller broker. The question is, who's entitled to the earnest money? And the facts always lead up to a buyer claim for the earnest money under the financing contingency. And for the purposes of this video, I don't really care what the facts are. There, you can, um, you know, for as many different brokers as are out there to send hotline emails, there's that many different scenarios that can result in a buyer and seller both believing they're entitled Boy. to the earnest money. What many brokers appear to not understand is that no buyer is ever entitled to the earnest money based on the financing contingency unless and until that buyer provides the lender letter identified in paragraph 5 of form 22a. That lender letter, first of all it has to come from the lender with whom buyer made their loan application and the lender could be the, mean the institutional lender or the mortgage broker. And the letter has to identify the date of loan application supported by the disclosure documents that prove that the loan application was made has to verify that buyer had sufficient funds to close the transaction and it has to identify the reason that the funds were not available. If this letter is delivered from buyer and if this letter shows compliance with the Form 22A requirement for loan application within five days following mutual acceptance, that the loan application was for the loan vehicle identified in Form 22A, for example, a 20% down conventional loan, something like that, uh, and show sufficient funds and the reason given for the unavailability of funds is not related to some bad faith maneuver on buyer's part like for example buyer failed to provide documentation required by lender in order to pre prepare the loan or process the loan then buyer's entitled to recovery of the earnest money. If buyer's letter doesn't show compliance with the terms of Form 22A, then buyer is not entitled to the earnest money. Now this question of good or bad faith, if, does buyer's letter show good faith or bad faith? That's not a question that I on the hotline can ever answer for any broker who might ask the question. And in fact, it's not a question that you can answer for your client, whether your client is the buyer or the seller. The question of good faith is going to have to be a question that's tested by the trier of fact who's hearing any particular case if the case is actually tried by a judge. So I, I recognize that, that most earnest money disputes are not ever the subject of a lawsuit, and so most times this question is not going to be the subject of a court decision. Nevertheless, I, I could never be in a position as the hotline lawyer to tell a broker on the hotline, this buyer acted in good faith or this buyer acted in bad faith. And similarly, you're not in a position as a broker to advise your buyer or your seller whether the letter from the lender absolutely evidences good faith or bad faith. If that's the only question as to buyer's compliance, then brokers, you need to be advising your client to seek legal counsel. Sometimes it's easier than that. Sometimes the buyer didn't make timely loan application, or sometimes the lender will say buyer did not have sufficient funds to close the transaction. And in those cases, the answer is much simpler. Buyer's not entitled to recovery of the earnest money in those cases. But if the buyer, if the buyer's letter from the lender shows compliance with all of the logistical requirements of Form 22A and no reason to question the good faith of buyer, then as a matter of contract, buyer is entitled to recovery of the earnest money even if that doesn't seem fair to the seller. If you have questions on this topic or any other, please send an email to me, legalhotline at warealtor.org. Thank you for being a Washington Realtors member.